13-week theater is supported by Patreon. Subscribe now and get exclusive early access. In 1945, author Josephine Leslie, using the pseudonym R.A. Dick, published the novel The Ghost and Mrs. Muir. Arguably the first popular modern paranormal romance, the book tells the story of an American woman who moves into the home of a dead British sea captain and falls in love with his ghost. The book was made into a film starring Rex Harrison and Gene Tierney in 1947, and in 1968 was, well, very loosely, adapted for a television series starring Edward Mulhair, Hope Lang, and Charles Nelson Reilly. In 1982, coming off a less than successful retelling of a classic tale, uh, but that's another story, producers Larry Rosen and Larry Tucker decided to do a gender flop on Mrs. Muir, telling the story of a teenage boy who falls in love with the ghost of a Hollywood starlet whose house his family moves into. For their starlet, Jennifer Farrell, the Larrys cast Anne Gillian, whose sitcom It's a Living, also known for a while as Making a Living, had just been canceled by ABC. As the boy, now known as Joey, they cast John P. Navin Jr., who had been in the movie Taps with Timothy Hutton and Tom Cruise, and had briefly made history as the first customer on the sitcom Cheers. Ah, military ID. First Sergeant Walter Keller, born 1944. That makes you 38. Must have fought in Vietnam. Oh, yeah. yeah. What was it like? It's gross. Yeah, that's what they say. War is gross. To round out the cast, they cast Mary Tyler Moore Show supporting player Georgia Engel as Joey's mom, film actor Brandon Maggard as Joey's dad, and one day at a time star Glenn Scarpelli as Joey's best friend, Mark. After the pilot had been shot at the suggestion of the network, the producers added a little sister for Joey, played by Maya Ackerling. Ackerling was quickly edited into the final version of the first episode, with a quick hand wave to explain why she wouldn't be seen again until the last scene. Where's she going? Brenda Kelly's family invited her to Lake Arrowhead for three days. Because I'm a warm person and make friends, you see. <laughs> and for icing on the cake, the producers hired Joey Scarberry, who had had a hit with the theme from The Greatest American Hero years before, to sing the show's theme song. Hello. The most beautiful ghost in the world And she slept here I just saw the most outrageous kind of a girl And she lives here Jennifer, what you doing to me? In and out of my life you appear They say the stars don't shine as bright Since you left here And Jennifer slept here Jennifer Slept Here debuted on NBC on October 21st, 1983, and got off to a rocky start. Hold it, Gordon. I love it. When Earth's star vanished, the heavens glowed a little less bright. The heavens glowed a little less brightly. Don't you just love it? Well, who are you and what are you doing in my house? My name is Jennifer Farrell, and this is my house. Jennifer Farrell died five years ago. I know. I'm a ghost. <laughs> you mean everywhere I go, everything I do, you're going to be there? I'm going to be there. I don't like it, Farrah. What's not to like? All you have to do is be on your toes 24 hours a day for the rest of your life. It's not fair. That's not Hold it. And it was written of Jennifer Farrell that when her star vanished, the heavens glowed a little less bright. Oh, I just love that part. <laughs> Thank you. 
airing on Friday evenings against mega hits The Dukes of Hazard and Webster, Jennifer Slept Here struggled in the ratings and averaged 83rd place in the Nielsen's. After the 13th episode, the last of their initial order, aired on May 12, 1984, NBC decided against ordering more and decided to just air reruns in a new time slot on Wednesday nights. At which point, something magical happens. Moved away from the tough competition, Jennifer Slept Here finally found its audience. The show suddenly broke into the top 30 shows, and NBC briefly considered renewing the show. But by then, it was too late. First, It's a Living had also suddenly found an audience in syndication, and plans were made to revive the show for first-run syndication to give stations that had bought ABC's two seasons brand new episodes. The show's producers didn't want to do it without Ann Jillian and pressured her to sign on. Also around that time, Jillian discovered that she was suffering from breast cancer. Seeing an opportunity to help bring awareness to the disease, Jillian agreed to do one more season of It's a Living and openly discussed her fight against the disease during the show's publicity tour to announce the revival. I'm Ann Jillian. The most challenging role I've ever played was a real-life role as a breast cancer patient. One out of ten women will develop breast cancer, so if you're over 35, have a mammogram. A mammogram can detect breast cancer three to five years earlier than self-exams, and through early diagnosis, 92% of breast cancer patients can be treated successfully. Don't wait. Please schedule a mammogram today at the Breast Diagnostic Center of Baptist Medical Center, Columbia. Unable and unwilling to do Jennifer Slept Here without Jennifer, NBC gave in to reality and pulled the plug. The show's first season would also be its last. And Jillian went on to portray herself in the TV movie The Ann Jillian Story in 1988, documenting her battle against cancer, which won her an Emmy and a Golden Globe, and her advocacy for breast cancer treatment and awareness inspired millions of women in their own fights against the disease. And unlike her sitcom counterpart, at least as of the spring of 2019, and Jillian is still very much with us. Jennifer slept here. She lived here. She loved here. Laughed here and wept here. She slept here. And she never really left here. Jennifer slept here.